Right, hi guys. <clears throat> Welcome back to the channel. First off, apologies that it's been so long since I've done any content. Um, had a bit of a change in job, which has kept me busy. And uh, I just thought I'd take a bit of a break away from it. But we've got plenty of updates to bring you. Uh, let's start with, I think the last place I left you was when I was collecting the calipers. So uh, yeah, let's take a look at them. So I picked up all the sets, they've all been done in the RAL 5002, same colour, well, pretty very similar, this should be the same colour, it's a very good match to the original front Alcons, but as you can see they've come up brilliant, the uh, company's done a really good job at that. So what I'm going to be doing shortly is I've got some new uh, kits to rebuild them all up, so what I'll do shortly is put you on time lapse and uh, show you me putting these back together uh, as you can see in the box here I've got absolutely all the other sets that were done loads of other sets uh, those are the ones that have just been shot busted because I'd like to get them uh, zinc coated to, so they look like the original ones they are actually going a little bit surface rust because they've been in there a week or so and the moisture is getting on them so uh, as told by James um, that the best thing to do is put WT-40 on them to stop them going rusty so I'll look at doing that uh, another update to bring you, <coughs> this is a replica Super 1600 front splitter, um, I saw it online, it was 140 I think it was, but by the time I got the delivery it was 170, so it's got the Ford stamped in there, and that should look great, it's a little wider than the normal Racing Puma one, the normal Racing Puma one will come in slightly here, because the front wings of the Super 1600 are wider. However, I've held it up against my racing Puma and it looks like it's going to be pretty good. So um, that will attach eventually to the bottom of the front bumper. So at some point I'll get that down. Uh, see about cleaning it up and holding the splitter against it, see what it looks like. Uh, what else have we got? These are the other bits that were done at the power coaters. So uh, these will all be going back on there and ready to build up. So they're going to look great. I'm looking forward to doing that in a minute. Um, now, the other thing to mention, uh, Alex, who I sent all the bolts to, made, did say to me that these weren't going to be done and the company was going to post them back to me to do elsewhere. However, I messaged him again and he said, great news, that we got both batches done <coughs> uh, for, for £20 each. So that's absolutely brilliant. So I'm much appreciated to that, Alex. Uh, it does have a mean, I mean, look how many bolts are in it. It's going to be an absolute nightmare figuring out where all these go, but I suppose that's part of the fun of it. Um, what I tried to do is key consistency to the bonds that would have been this colour new and the other ones that would have been this colour. Uh, so in like the grey finish, so these are like the subframe bolts, etc. Um, there you go, drive shaft nuts, etc. Um, so yeah, it's looking good. So look, what I'm going to do now is I'll, um, I'll put you on time lapse and we'll have a go at rebuilding the calipers uh, and it'd be great to get them going. Other thing to mention is I haven't done any more work on the engine uh, since the last video I believe that was in. But I'm going to get a drill and use a drill with a bit on the end just to clean out uh, clean out all the other dirtier bits. Because I do really want to get this masked up and start getting it painted. Uh, now, especially now, especially that I've got the uh, zinc bolts back, it means all the, bit, all the bits that I've got for the engine, which are in here, and in here, etc. I can then rebuild the engine and start making it look really good. And the other thing to do, as I've said now a million times, is to also make start on the gearbox. So, um, yeah, let's get back at it. It's been a long time. So, um, yeah, let's see how we get on to get these calipers built up.
So I'll stop the time lapse there. I've uh, been having a bit of a nightmare. Uh, what I had to do was where the coat is built up on there and on the back of here, it meant that this wouldn't actually slide on very well. So I had to use a Stanley blade to scratch it off in order to get that on. I then used the tool to drop this back inside, ensuring that the new rubber gasket washer is on there, which it was. Put that in, I had some difficulty putting the seal, the dust seal, which covers the wind, the bit that winds back into the caliper. However, I got my partner to, once I held it open, I got my partner to do it, and that's gonna seem to be the best way to do it. Um, cleaned up the bleed screw slightly, it was in good order. So I've, I'm not nicked it up yet. I think it's five Newton meters for bleed screws. I'm not entirely sure, so I'll get that checked. But for now, it's just hand tight. Um, the other thing to mention, so what you saw me doing there was use some of the lube that the sliders go into. Now what I was finding is that there was old bits of grit, sand and dirt and whatever in there, and this should slide very smoothly in and out. And when you, when you sometimes hear someone say they've got a seized caliper, what they mean is, or what's happening is, is that this slider, which slides in and out as the brake, as the pads come in and out, this moves with it. However, seized caliper means that this gets jammed in there and therefore it's seized, so it can't move in and out, so the, 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 the caliper stays stuck on. So what I've done there is use some of the grease and put it on there, in and out, in and out, until I've removed all of the dirt that's in there. So now when I put my new ones in, they'll remain nice and fixed and firm in there, in there and glide nicely without any grit blocking them. So as you can see there, it's not quite as smooth as I'd like, so I'm just gonna give that another wipe out in there. Uh, then what I'll do is I'll fill them up with the slider grease and then we'll continue building them up with the, uh, the other bits that have come with them. So I'll uh, put you back on time lapse and let's see if we can get this one caliper completely rebuilt. So after lots of swearing, as ever, whenever working on the car, standard, um, I finally built them up. So I'll show you what I've done. So as you saw in the time lapse, or hopefully as you saw, uh, it's a shame I didn't get these um, zinc plated, but I'll get some new ones or get them cleaned up a little bit. But there we have two complete pair of calipers. Uh, as I mentioned, I think in the little video I did before, the hardest part of talk from it all was holding this seal in whilst getting the this bit of metal to screw back on the thing. As I said, we got my partner to help me and we managed to get there. So uh, the other thing to point out is I, I, when I first put these on, I messaged uh, the Ford Racing Puma chat that we've got and the friend Alan pointed out that I'd had these on the wrong way around. So I've now swapped them the other way around because I've got so many parts and I forget that there's one for each side so it's not specific but uh really really happy with how they've come out i'll need to tighten these up to whatever torque spec setting i'll check on what the bleed nipple needs to be and i'll talk that up to spec i think it's about five uh, but as i said clean them up slightly so they look pretty good loads of grease uh inside the sliders so uh yeah let's put them next to the ones and see what they look like There we are. Needless to say, really happy with how they've come out. It's been a long time since I've come back in the garage and started doing some work again. Kind of regret not doing it now, but hey, we're back. 
slowly getting there. Uh, the other thing to say is that I noticed this cap in the top of the pack, and I remember that it came off a starter. I'm not sure if you see that. Let's give you a better look. Uh, found one of the uh, Allen key heads there. I've just got to search in this pile for the other one. I have made a start, but um, that's freshened it up pretty nicely. So uh, once I get that in and tighten these down, that's the starter motor done. So I can put that back in the drawer. Uh, I'll have another look now to see if I can find that last nut and uh, get that complete and put it in the drawer. So I'm super happy with that. Um, just trying to figure out what else to do. I'm going out for lunch shortly, so uh, that's going to put a hold on things for now. Um, but when we get back, I'll see what else to look at. I I need to check the other um, disc actually, it's still in the solution outside so perhaps I'm going to do that now and see how that's looking. I have a feeling that I may have to do that again but uh, let's have a look. <laughs> So as I thought, I left it in there a bit too long. It's built, built up some like black deposits. Uh, so I'll look at cleaning those off as you can see there, but that's not so bad. Uh, but they're all looking a hell of a lot better than they did. They need a little bit of treatment, but they're not looking really rough anymore. It was beginning to get a bit rusty again, but that's what's gonna happen. Maybe. So let's put those four together. Put that in the partly ready file. Uh, this is annoying. I managed to break the connector plug on this. That's something I'm gonna have to look at replacing, but I'm sure it's relatively easy to get, probably for standard puma as well as the racing puma. Um, but that's it for now. I'm gonna go and uh, have some lunch and then hopefully I'll be back a bit later on to give you a little bit more content, and if not. Uh, later in the week but still need to uh, get these pressed out and put in because i've been saying for some time now but uh yeah that's all for now thanks for watching